Now, although this starts up on boot to an imaging screen, you can scan, but you're not going to be able to save any images. It'll tell you that you have to have a patient last name and an MRN number before you can do anything. So just go ahead and click OK, and we'll go up to this patient key here and enter the patient. It needs, at a minimum, a uh, last name. This MRN is also known as a patient ID. It will fill that in automatically, although you may want to use your own patient number or patient ID uh, because it will be easier to search for the patient later if they come back for an exam. So we'll just enter test yeah, as a patient and then I can just click OK. And now I'm ready to go. I can just start scanning. And like we said in the previous, you can you know, change your gain and use all of those controls to optimize your image. Now, if we are going to do a previous patient, it's not as easy. You can't just go to the archive, select one, and get started. You need to go back to this archive, select this search box up here. It says search for study, and I have it selected as the last seven days. If I if it might go to just today and you won't be able to see it but you could select this but what you want is this MRN number you know if I double click here and try and start an exam and save patients it'll tell me it's been hasn't been done in the last 24 hours so you can't actually use that study you need to go back to that patient information screen and type in that MRN that is here uh, when you click new you would type this in um, now, if you did do this and selected that patient, you click restart. It's going to tell you you can't do it unless it was done in the last 24 hours. So, again, copy down that MRN from the previous study. You type it in here, and it will fill in all that information. You click OK, and you're ready to begin scanning. So now that we have our patient selected, we are ready to scan. I do have a probe connected and just a little gel so you can see some of the things that happen when I make changes on the screen. Now, as mentioned in the previous, we have all these quick keys here. Uh, that will allow you to do a number of things. Notice this next button. There is a whole other page of things that you can add, such as the biopsy guide, guide reference lines for the center line, a grid, trapezoidal imaging. Eye scan gain. This is for that automatic optimization for eye scan. It, it adjusts your TGCs and some gain, some other features to improve the image. And if you think that's too low, you can always increase the gain for that eye scan feature. You can click reset and it'll go right back to the beginning. So each time you press I scan, it will turn it on or off. So now that you have your patient ID entered, you're first going to want to select your probe preset. Now these presets are imaging presets, and that's this looks like a two folders or a folder and a piece of paper here. You're going to click that, and you get all these selections. You can these are all your presets. Now these do a number of things. One is it optimizes the image, including depth, focal zones, dynamic range, gray maps for what it thinks that you're trying to do. So you would just use this. I'll select carotid and hit this set key right here. And it will begin in my carotid exam. Up here, it your little, tells you what it is that you're looking at. You have carotid. The probe is the L12-3. 37 hertz is your frame rate. The depth is four centimeters as shown here these little depth markers we have two four H gen that is your harmonics imaging at the general setting and that also refers to this little triangle down here you have the PG and R P is penetration G is general and R is resolution and then you have these numbers down here saying for penetration it's going to use a lower set of frequencies and you can select that down here you can see it go to P over here saying, okay, I'm using 4 to 8 megahertz. When I go to G, it's going 4.4 4 to 8 megahertz. And whoops, when I go to HRES, it's going 5 to 10 megahertz, telling me the range of frequencies it's going to use with the tissue harmonics. If I turn harmonics off, it's going to give you specific frequencies, penetration, general, and resolution. And that's how you're going to optimize that. Typically with the Philips systems, their presets are really good. You may not need to change that unless you get a larger patient. And that's the first thing that you'll want to do is try the harmonics. Uh, we'll first change this resolution to general or penetration. 
and then try harmonics on and off, uh, particularly if you're having trouble with penetration. Turning that harmonics off can often give you a little deeper pe penetration, but image quality will generally go down. Up here, you'll also see it says off and 2D size. This off, that is basically saying, what will this trackball do here? So if I press that, oops, I'm sorry, press here, it'll go to 2D size, and I can decrease or increase the width of my image size. And this works with all the probes. And basically, you're going to be just increasing the frame rate when you do it. So we went up to 174 frames per second by making it small and then making it wide. We went down to 37 frames per second. So this would be the first thing you do if you need higher frame rates on your image. Now this, as well as all of these, will change depending on what imaging modes you're doing. Like now it changed to SV for sample volume. And so I can move that and then change the 2D size again, of course, if I want to increase my frame rate. So just go back and forth by clicking this key. I'm going to get out of that real quick. Go back to 2D. Left, right, invert, up, down, invert. Uh, the loop, you want to go by heartbeats and how many heartbeats, or do you just want to go by time? So when you save a loop, you want to save the last three seconds or all the way up to 16 or 17 seconds. Uh, however high it will go and on this is saying with the current frame rate it will only allow a loop time of a total of 21 seconds and so little brackets show that it's not available so it says 21 seconds so you can change how that loop is acquired when you hit the acquire in a live image Again, we have the harmonics and 2D optimization focal zones X-Res, this is a spec reduction imaging. It's going to be on for most applications, and in general, it's a really good technology and you want to use it. Uh, if you turn it off, you'll get a much grainier image on the screen. Sonos CT is also known as compound imaging. Res Speed, this is for the focal zone for better resolution. So you go to resolution and it will reduce the width of the focal zone to give you better resolution in that area it's going to focus right on a certain spot and the speed makes for a wider focal zone so you're not going to get quite the same resolution but it may or may not be necessary going to page two we have a gray map chroma persistence and if you want your persistence to be smooth or smoothing i'm sorry it says pers you have your persistence on the top you're smoothing on the bottom so you're going to click top and bottom to change it so biopsy, we choose if we want it off, on if you have a gun, and if you have a needle. So you'll see the lines appear, and you can twist this to change the angle of the needle. And of course, that when you get to a different type of probe, that line will come down. You have your reference lines. This is for a center line. You can click it again for a grid line or off. Power, in general, people don't change that at all. Trapezoid makes for trapezoidal imaging and you can see there that the image is wider in a trap makes for a trapezoid down throughout the image so note that when you turn on trapezoidal imaging compound imaging goes off so you will possibly lose some image resolution I'm just scanning my finger that's what that is up there I scan gain we discussed that earlier when you t hit the eye scan the eye scan is going to change a number of features like dynamic range, gain, and TGC controls. And so when I hit it, it'll go, and you can change if you think that gain is too low or too high. You can change that. Hit reset to go back to the normal imaging. So now we'll just go back to the first page and hit some of these things here. Uh, we'll hit these imaging modes in a little bit when we go into other sections where we'll hit M mode, PW Doppler, and other videos. During 2D imaging, this compression, you could twist that, and that is also known as dynamic range, as I explained in the earlier movie. It's going to change, basically, to make it either a high contrast or a much smoother image as you're, as you're going across. I can demonstrate this very quickly by twisting the compression there. I'm, it's not a perfect image, but you'll see it goes from a high contrast to a very smooth image all the way down. Now let's say I messed that up and I don't like the way it is. I can reset 
you know, once I make all these changes, I can reset and go back to the default by clicking on that setting, reselect carotid, and it'll go back to the system defaults. Now you can save custom presets, say if you do change your compression um, and gray maps or whatever, and you wanna make some changes to your image, you can save that as a custom preset, and we'll get to that in a later movie. So let's come on down to the zoom box. You can simply twist it to zoom in, but you also have an HD zoom where you're going to push this down, it's gonna give you a region of interest box. And notice this change from position and to box size. So I can move the box around, I can click this and change the box to something much smaller to get a much higher resolution. And then I'll click it again to zoom in on that one area. So now that's going to focus on that area and give me a higher resolution image in that spot. Click it again and go back to the main 2D. Again, that zoom will work as normal. We have our depth and you can also change your focal zone and that's here this, these little arrows are showing you just that basically that's where your focal zone is. You can add focal zones and adjust those. But note, the more focal zones you add, the lower the frame rate. When I went up to four focal zones, it went from 37 frames per second to 11. So you will see a big difference when you add those focal zones. Down around here, we have our dual imaging. So we can just click dual and there's a little red dot showing me that that's the live image and I can just go back to the right and left and then freeze to freeze both images and again you can just keep making those changes left and right and then click dual again to go back to your main imaging screen. While I have this linear probe attached I'll also show you needle visualization now, there's no way to turn this on right now, but that's because I'm using the carotid preset. It won't turn it on for certain settings. In order to do that, you're going to need to choose a different preset, like uh, MSK General, for example. We're going to click on that, and you'll see added over here we have needle visualization. Click that on, and now you have needle approach. You can select it to go one side to the other. You have your path, shallow, steep, or medium, and then you can simply turn it on and off. Now on this, the needle will actually want to go parallel with that line in order to get it to really glow on screen. That's it for the 2D imaging. Next, we will move on to measuring and annotations.